Welcome to the Business Spotlight Series. I am Everardo Resendiz, also known as Coach Ever around here. I'm a certified executive and business coach with Action Coach in Northwest Louisiana. Today, I have Robert Newman with Global Solutions International as my guest. Today, we're going to be talking about his and his business, his journey to the ownership of this business, challenges, best practices, and share a peek into what's really like to build and operate a business. If this is your first time on the channel, be sure to like and subscribe to get notifications when we drop conversations just like this one. And so, Robert, welcome, and thank you for being here today. Always a pleasure to put you in, in, in like-minded business. So I thank you for inviting me and having the confidence in me being able to appeal to your audience. Awesome. Would you... Um, Share with a little bit with the, with the audience, with us, uh, the background, and and tell us a little bit about Global um, Solutions. Okay, sure. I, uh, I'm i a Southern boy. I was born in Jackson, Mississippi. We migrated up north to St. Louis when I was about two or three. So if uh, you ever ask me where, where home is, home is St. Louis. I, I grew up, went to high school at, in St. Louis. I joined the military when I was about 21. 22 years old, uh, and I spent 21 years in the military. And I'm, I'm pretty sure I can address more details about my military background and experience there and how I use the, that network within the military to sort of roll into the business that I'm doing right now. Uh, so I'm very excited to share with you that particular journey. Uh, Global Wait, okay. National, but yes. the organization itself, it was founded in my undergrad. I was doing an undergrad. I had to de develop an organizational development plan, right? And the premise of the company that I'm operating now came from my head back in 2003, four time frame. And at, during that time, we focused on Human Performance Improvement, which now is Organizational Development, which is one of the domains that Global Solutions International operate. The other domains we'll talk about a little bit later is on the federal contracting side. So thank you. Okay, so um, will, you, will you tell us what Global Solutions does these days? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So what we do, uh, we have a couple of lanes where professional services organization. We, op we offer program management, management consulting, organizational development. On the program management and, and organizational development, so really all domains, we work with the federal government. So federal government all down to state and local uh, government. So we have several contracts with the federal government right now, and some of these contracts go all the way up to the uh, classified level. Right, so we we help the contract, we help the government uh, man hard to fill positions when it comes to the defense of the nation. That's on the uh, program management side of the house. On the organizational development side of the house, we not only work with the federal government, but state and locals as well as civilian organizations. We are unbiased company when it comes to uh, understanding issues and, and problems within your organization. So we come in, give your unbiased look and recommendations on how we can sort of uh, help you get back on track based upon conversations that we had with uh, the C-suite uh, employees as well as the managers, first line supervisors. Supervisors, yeah. Yep. Yep. And so this is done in, in, in federal settings, military and non-military. Absolutely. Absolutely. Very, very cool. Okay, so how you get into that in the first place? Well, so <laughs> that's a great question. So when it was, I always had an exit strategy from the military. Right? So in my exit strategy, I saw a position within the military that was contracted to one of my friends when he retired. It's an absolute true story. This was back in 98. So I'm going to age myself a little bit. And he was working as the training manager as a civilian contractor for organization. So when he transitioned from the military, he fell right into that 
training management position. My background is training management as well, right? So I said then when I retire, if this position still exists, I'm going to have it. I retired from that same organization, 608 Air Operations Center, on a Friday. And that Monday, I was the training manager for that organization for a contracting company. During that time, I dealt with the C-suite people on the contracting company to understand federal contracting business. I also observed how some companies sort of treated their employees, which was not great at the time. Remember, we're talking 15 years ago, right? And so I said, I wanted to develop a company where I can put uh, my employees first and how and have those employees understand that they are valuable members within the organization. So that sort of led me into studying about federal contracting, learning about that on a deeper level. And so I started uh, moving from company to company as a contracted employee, learn different principles and practices of different companies, how they interacted with their employees, how they interacted with their clients and their customers. And I sort of incorporated a lot of those things into the methodologies that I use right now to attract and retain employees. So uh, that's sort of how we got here. Uh, okay. Additionally, ever here's the great piece about this. As a contracted employee or companies prior to me starting my company, I worked on four different contracts. I used that experience and that network to then go and compete for those contracts that I worked on previously. And every contract that I worked on for and for a company, I won that and it became a contract for my company. Oh, very cool. And so yeah, yeah. set the stage for the viewers. Um, what is uh, the current ownership like? I mean, are you the sole founder, owner? Uh, are there any other investors or partners in it? Well, I am the sole founder, owner, president, CEO of the organization. I I funded the company uh, with my savings. Right. Okay. Uh, so my company right now we're operating from zero debt, uh, which is one of the things that I said I wanted to do. So we our growth has sort of been slow and steady. However, we have not accrued any debt. And so I focus uh, at the very beginning on the administrative processes, meaning what I call the back end uh, applications, the payroll, the timekeeping, the uh, French benefits. Uh, so I focus on putting all of those things into place prior to really uh, doing a lot of business development. I wanted to prepare the organization for the uh business development piece. So should I win contracts and gain employees? I don't have to simultaneously work on the back end while onboarding a new employee. They certainly a very smart way to do it. All right. And so um you, you said you're you're a CEO, business development person, all these hats. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Janitor in chief and all that. Yeah. So uh what's your role really right now in the business? So right now, of course, I'm the CEO of the organization, and I oversee uh, another hat is business development. I, do, I have brought on internal staff, and they all work remotely. So I do have a capture and proposal manager. I do have a, a chief innovations. I do also have a accounting uh, team that manages those pieces of the organizations for me. So now I have a little room to breathe. I can focus business development. And, and my primary focus in business development is to form collaborative relationships, strategic relationships, other like organizations. So I, I'm very busy doing that. A matter of fact, I'm very seldom in the office. I spend a lot of time traveling and uh, doing business. Okay, and so you look at your role, right, as CEO, and then overseeing the business development, right? Um, will we say that, um, you know, 
a part of your of your job. It truly is the in the job type things and in the business, um, day to day operations, the actual going out and visiting customers, right? Um, how much of your time is dedicated to the in the business store uh, things as opposed to on the business, you know, items like you know strategy planning, etc. So right now, while developing the business to get me to this, I, I I dealt with a lot of I had several different mentors, right? And so we develop a strategy. Every year we pull out our business plan and we refresh our business. So when we're looking at uh, the internal operations of the business, I spend less time having to maintain it now because of the time I spent up front putting those processes in place. So now I have individuals that are able to handle those internal processes, and I'm then able to look outside of the organizations to really focus on uh, creating strategic collaborative relationships. So on a percentage-wise, uh, admin uh, with the organization now, probably 30% of my time. Business development is probably 70 All right. Okay. And so let's move on to what makes your business so special, right? So uh, who primarily does your business serve? If I were the audience, how will I know that I was a good fit for your services? Oh, so, you know, the best way to uh, determine the culture and climate of organization is to look at its past performance and also uh, the collaborative relationships uh, that I've established, but more importantly, to reach out to present and former employees, right? I think that's the best way you can gauge uh, the, cli the climate and culture of an organization. So we serve as primarily federal government, right? Federal government have what they call a CPARS system, contract performance and rating systems. Periodically, while we're performing on the contract, based upon feedback from the customers and the employees, the federal government then go in and assign a rating to our organizations. Any federal agency that has access to that CPARS system and look at our performance uh, real time. As it stands right now, the performance that uh, Global Solutions has, the feedback that we receive from contracting officers have always been exceptional. Exceptional because this may bring a few feathers. My focus has never been, my number one focus has never been the customer. My number one focus has always been employee engagement and employee happiness, right? I work from this concept. If I keep my employees happy, if I focus on them, if I show them that they're valued members of my team, I appreciate the knowledge that they have. And more importantly, I feel privileged that they decided or chose to work for me, right? I show them that and I express that to them. So if I can create and show value to my employee here, they're going to take care of the customer. They're going to take care of the customer. Thus, my CPARS ratings have always been exceptional because the employees have always done exceptional work because they don't have to go to work and stress about pay, benefits, or any of that. And they know I use, I have a flat organization much like uh, you ever, you're able to contact me directly doing business to business. My employees are able to do the exact same thing. They can text me, call me, email me uh, anytime from 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. And so I think okay. that's that is the primary reason that makes my company so attractive. Very good. And so what is one thing you wish more people knew about your business? Well, you know, here's that we are, we strive to be perfectionists. We understand errors and issues happen, but we are very responsive when something go awry. We're not only customer facing, but employee facing uh, organization as well. And uh, we enjoy what we do in our organization. So I tell 
folks, hey, uh, obviously, this is fun. I enjoy what I do. I love engaging with uh, my employees. I love engaging with the, the customers and our clients. It's what I dreamed of. It's what I pray for. It's what I hope. Right? And so I'm doing precisely what I thought I would be doing in this particular moment. Right? So how can I not be anything other than grateful? And the happiness that I have within myself, I share that as much as I can with, with others and with my employees. So if you want to come and work for Global Solutions International, understand that we focus on employee happiness and employee engagement. All right. So how do I sign up and get to work with you now? <laughs> well, we can start to, by, by uh, uh, maintaining contact after this call. I will, I will, I will uh, actually ask that question in a little bit. But... <laughs> so um, well, that leads me to, to marketing, right? I mean, I know that um, you have a, a sort of a captured audience um, and, and it's all contract based, right? So th these this these have to be the sort of things that get published and you apply for send RFPs and you know you get approved for. Um, but ultimately somebody's making a decision on these and where they have competitors and alternatives and differentiation. How do you get through your message to those who are making the decision about? Is it just a matter of price or is it more about what you're actually delivered? Well, I mean, the government, the government's kind when it, when it comes to, to their finance, right? So that is a fact. However, what's more important, if if we can digress for a moment, when I go back and, and I, I mentioned to you, the government has what they call a contractor performance and rating system, right? So, and and how we get those ratings and how they're able to, to view those, we have to send what they call a past performance questionnaire to our uh, past customers. That customer then in turn send that questionnaire directly to the government agency. I don't see the ratings that he or she provide to the government agency. I can only see ratings that we receive in our C forms. And when I look into that, is always exceptional, right? Okay. So I'm grateful for those contract officer representatives and those contracting officers who assign those exceptional ratings to me. So that's one thing. They want to look at your past performance. Another part of that, they want to look at the scope of work that the contract they're soliciting for has and what I have done, right? So... It's highly unlikely if it's a $100 million contract that they will assign it to a company who only has done $500,000 in revenue, right? So those type of things have to line up. And then pricing. They have different ways of uh, awarding you or rating you based upon pricing. They have what we call a lowest bid, technically acceptable, right? And then they can have best value type uh, contracts. The lowest bid technically acceptable is simply, hey, you have the technical qualifications and certifications to do this job. We're going to go with the lowest bid out of the companies as long as they're technically uh, qualified. Then the best, best value could be you could have a higher price than your competitors, but the quality of your services and your past performance exceeds them. So we will opt to go with the higher price based upon your past performance and your CPAR ratings. So that's then, sort of how they do that. What if you're in the same playing field and your competitors are also receiving these ratings? Well, well, most of them do. Most of your uh, the folks who compete in, in my field or in my domain, we have pretty standard ratings. Now they go to the customers. Sometimes they may go to the customers and then word of mouth uh, may play a small role in it, right? But if it comes out, everything's everything's even, really they're going to look at your past performance. Let's look at co contracts that you've been awarded and executed that's similar in scope. Case in point, if the contract is worth $100 million, 
and my competitor has only done 500,000, but I've done 25 million. Chances are they're going to go with the company that's done 25 million because you have more past performance and it's closer to the scope in which they're looking. For. That makes sense. It makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. All right. So um, we, we spent some time focused on, on the business and, you know, the, the, what you have done within and these philosophies that you have that are fairly important. You know, I think that, uh, you know, having established that you focus on your employees, on the happiness of their employees, on the fact that they're developing so that they can in turn provide your customer with exceptional value. Okay. <laughs> right. It, it, it's a key component of these. And I think that that needs to be your headline no matter what, right? Yes. So, um, but looking at your at your journey so far, what has been the most memorable roadblock or hurdle that you were challenged with that you were forced to overcome? Oh man, that is a a great question. And I get a little emotional when, when someone asks me this. And I'll tell you why. Uh, when I first jumped into contracting, obviously, you know, uh, other than working for companies and having access to limited knowledge that they chose to share with me, I didn't know what I was doing. So I dealt with a couple companies, a couple companies when I got into this who took full advantage of this. So here's the process. Uh, the company will oh, reach out to you and you reach out to the company and you want to do a subcontracting agreement with them that company uh, to work on a project together. Uh, what I didn't know when I first started was that you, you should have a non-disclosure agreement in place. You should talk about your team and arrangement and your work share split, right? These things I had no knowledge of. Uh, they said, we're trying to fill these positions. Can you uh, fill these positions? Of course, it was right within my domain, which is C4 ISR, right, domain. So I have an extensive network there. What was happening ever was I would reach out to folks. I would receive their resumes. I would vet their resumes against the qualification requirements. I then forward the resume to the prime, right? The prime forwards the resumes to the, to the customer or the government agency, and the government agency say, yeah, your name. I'm very meticulous when it comes to details. If there is, if a, if a uh, employee should meet 20 requirements, I'm going to ensure that they have met those 20 requirements prior to forwarding the resume. And so after doing this about five or six times and the larger company coming back to me saying, hey, these folks are not qualified. I then call one of my mentors and I say, hey, Man, I'm sending these resumes to this company. They keep coming back and saying these folks are not qualified, and I know they're qualified. And he said, Rob, listen, if you're sending the resumes, I'm absolutely certain that they're qualified candidates. He said, they, they just played you. They're playing you because you're a rookie. He said, do you have an NBA in place? Do you have a team in a range of work share? It's absolutely not. He said, absolutely. They're playing you for, because you're a rookie. What they're doing, they're going to accept these resumes from you, tell you that they're not qualified, and they're going to have their internal team reach out to these people so they can cut you out of the loop. So that was, uh, that happened to me Ooh. sort of back to back, you know, like within a week on two different projects that I was working on. But here's the thing too, Ever, the second time that happened to me, the guy who came back to me well, what he said was this. He said, hey, Rob, listen, when we talk about teaming, I think we won the contract. Now let's talk about work share split. He said, technically, I don't have to give you anything because we didn't have a team and arrangement or NDA in place. So I don't have to share any of the uh, the employees with you. And he did it. So that hurt. That hurt very bad because we won that contract or he won the contract. He come back to me four months later and said, hey, I, I need your help to win this contract. I said, okay, I have a network. This is within my wheelhouse. But I'm going to need from you an NDA, a team and arrangement. We need to discuss work share split. And I need you to uh, sponsor me for a top secret facility. Once we get those documents, 
over to my team. I have my team look at it. We sign or make any red lines. You send the fully executed documents back to me, then we can have the discussion. Other than that, I'm not open to having the conversation. Well, ever, the guy who screwed me also was the guy who gave me my first contract. And that first contract for a, a, a rookie company, very rookie, very small company, had an initial value of $1.5 million, which was huge uh, for me, right? So I've learned to check my emotions. I've learned to check my emotions. Had I not been responsible emotionally, I probably would have never talked to that guy again, and I would have lost out on that opportunity that I had. That's right. Yeah. So it, it, it almost brings back uh, to me the 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 line from uh, the Godfather, yeah. you know, it's just business. Yes. This is in person. It's just business, and you know, I mean, there's a lot of discussion about all that. Um, yes. You're absolutely right. There is a place where emotions, um, you know, can overrule, can rule, and 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 can actually make us be impulsive and perhaps close some doors. Um, so yeah, in, in my experiences in doing these, I found those that those who can wrangle them in and keep them close get further ahead, right? So. Um, now that's very good insight. Very good. And so, so let me um, let me close the loop on this, this one right here, because there's one final piece. The two contracts that the two companies sort of took advantage of me over, I didn't receive anything from those two contracts, correct? Yeah. Well, with the government, there's a cycle. The contracts expire and they have to recompete those contracts or rebid those contracts, correct? Right. So those same two contracts that they screwed me out of, I went back and teamed with a different company and we won them. Right. So um karma. <laughs> oh Hard work, dedication, but also. I only focus on the outcomes that I want. Right. I take the lesson. I understand the lesson. I know what I need to do moving forward. Right. These uh, contracts was very important to me. Working with companies, you wasn't fair with me. So we're, I'm coming after these contracts because they're still important to me. And I got you know, the right. Wow. Having a, a conversation uh, similar to this one, another interview, um, um, somebody was saying that, you know, these errors that we commit in our growth process, in our development process, it's, um, there are costs of learning, yeah. you know, and we need to look at them as such. Yeah. That's unfortunately, I don't want an investment, but we have made it and we better take advantage of it. That's right. Yes. All right. Outstanding. So um, let's move. Let, let, let's now look forward, right, and and see uh, uh, what comes next. Where do you see the business in the next two, three to five years? Like I mentioned earlier, every year we pull out our, our business development plan and we go through and we update the models that's inside of the program. Right? There's back end things that I work on that I want to get for my organization while uh, I'm looking at. Uh, it from a strategic perspective as well. So we have several different federal and state uh, certifications uh, that will, you know, sort of even the playing field for our organization for global solutions international. And uh, the the federal government have several different acquisition platforms. And so what does that mean? It means that they will solicit on these different acquisition platforms. They will send out their requests for Post requests for uh, proposals on these platforms. If you are not a part of that platform, then you don't see those solicitations. You're not even able to pair me in. So this year and the next year, I, our goal is to get on as many of those acquisition platforms as possible while increasing our revenue share, increasing 
our production and decreasing our uh, response rates to the uh, solicitation. We've been successful this year to be uh, awarded two contracts on two different acquisition platforms that gives us access to different solicitations in which we're able to respond to. So our goal for the next three to five years is to continue uh, getting access to these acquisition platforms, to continue creating collaborative relationships and to increase our probability of wins on the proposals that we go out. Can I ask you something? Going back, perhaps to the to the question of the employees, I think that that's a, that's a very key part of this conversation. Um, of course, you know every employee that you take is a mechanism for production, right? They, they each one is, is profitability, right? So, um, if 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 I'm not in in your line of business, right? If I'm uh, you know in a trade their condition, just to give you an example, right? How does it translate? What does it mean that you um, that you care for the happiness of the employees? <laughs> it was it. So understand, uh, ever you know the millennials and Gen Zs, and 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 now the Alpha generation are they're very different than uh, Gen X and Boomers, right? And their approach to life. Period. Uh, my time, my era growing up was a shut up and color type era, right? Oh, boys, is it not that anymore? Right, and the boys don't cry type <laughs> era. The era that we're in right now is a very feeling forward, emotional, uh, intelligent forward type era. So the millennials and your Gen Zs, they lead with their feelings, they lead with their emotions. If you pay attention when you're speaking with them, more often than not, the first two words that come out of their mouth is I feel. Uh, so I understand that. So I've uh, also, I hired an HR firm to, firm to do a study on me and let me help me understand the generational gaps that exist, right? And, and, and it's more often, it's the way that we communicate. Back to shut up. Shut up in color, they're not going for that. Right? They don't operate like that. They're going to be heard. They want to be heard. They want to feel valued. So I tend to those feelings. I tend to those emotions. I have internal team building courses that I hold just for my internal staff so we understand how to communicate with one another better how to communicate based upon how the receiver wants to be communicated with, right? So uh, we have we also have uh, probably three company events a year where we all get together as a group, have dinner, have lunch or something. I also uh, offer them bonuses uh, in the summer and bonuses in the winter. And, I call them just because bonuses. You don't have to do anything special, but if you continue to perform on the contract and the customers are happy, here you go, a just because bonus. We also in incorporate, uh, so I'm sort of jumping into our financial benefits a little bit, uh, but we also incorporate uh, annual raises. We incorporate, um, they have access to a wealth manager, they have access to our personal accountants, as well. And so these type of uh, benefits, that they get directly through the company at no additional charge. And, you, so, and these, these are um, W-2 employees? Are they contract employees for you? Well, you know, what's interesting is, is both. I have both for my company, W-2 and 1099 employees. Now, obviously, the 1099 may not receive as many fringe benefits as the W-2, but I have 1099 employees that have been on my team for several years. So any of the bonuses that I give to the W-2 employees, I extend those to the 1099 employees as well. They have access to the wealth manager. They have access to 401k 
plan. Now, I don't support the 1099 through my 401k, but they have access to the companies that I utilize. They also have access to my um, the medical and dental programs that I provide to the W-2 employees. I don't offset the prices for the 1099s like I do for the uh, W-2s, but everything that my W-2 employees have access to and I provide, I extend that to the 1099 employees. Oh, and it's worked good. out, it's worked out magnificently uh, for right. all. Yeah. I mean, they, they, they have a choice to either use it or not, but the, the, the thing is that the choice exists. And it's not the case for many people. Outstanding. Okay, so um, let me let me move on a little bit. I know that you're you're working you work on your team and developing them. Um, we have covered a lot of ground in our conversation today, and and there's a, there, there's a number of nuggets in here that I'm sure will be useful for people. See, the the whole point of this is that we we want to provide real value, right? We want to provide people with what it is that um, will help them move forward. And a new idea that you hear about, maybe you start kind of working towards that. And so I encourage people to come back and, and watch a few times for, um, for these nuggets of information. And so as we begin to wrap up, I have a few rapid fire questions. Uh, quick top of head answers to each. I may elaborate a little bit on those, but let's get started, okay? So what is the key to success for you? Passion. Understanding what your passion is and following that. All right. What is your one piece of advice for other business owners? Only focus on the outcomes that you want. The energy that you focus on, that you apply to things that you don't want is the same energy that's applied to what you want. So I only focus on the outcomes that I want. Excellent. What is one book you're reading now or you have read more, more most recently? What got you here would not get you there. Very good. Very good book. I definitely recommend it. All right, if you had to choose only one area of your business that you could immediately improve tomorrow, what will it be? Marketing, and, and so business development and marketing go together, right, uh, as far as I'm concerned. So I, I would say the umbrella would be business development side of the house. Very good. And so um, before we get into the final question of the day, how can others learn more about you or your company so they can use your services or become part of it? It's super. So my website is gsiusa14.com. You can go to that website. I have a capability briefing on there. It tells you everything you need to know about our past performance and how to get access to me. Additionally, uh, you can email me uh, directly at Robert Newman at GSI USA 14. In the subject line, you should put, hey, coach, action coach ever sent me. Thank you so much. All right. So what is most inspiring for you today? What inspires me, I, I think, is that I'm a very positive individual and the future, as far as I'm concerned, is always bright. Right? There's always unlimited possibilities. So you, you hear the cliche term, follow your dreams, right? Sometimes I, I'll just tell folks, follow your spirit, follow your heart. It, it, it sort of knows where you need to be going. It definitely does, doesn't it? Yeah. I, see, I, I don't know that it's a cliche. It may be a cliche for those who don't actually experience it. Yeah. But okay. if you do believe in it, and you put your energy and your focus and you focus on the outcomes that you want, guess what? You get there, right? Absolutely. So uh, <laughs> I completely agree with you. Thank you so much for joining us today, Robert, and sharing this with us. Um, thank you, the audience, for being here and watching and share these with other people. You never know who might be inspired by listening to this interview. Make it a great day. Until next time. Thank you, Everett. Take care.